Hello and welcome to uh, our online worship here um, at Christ Church, Bake Up and Holy Trinity Tunstead. My name is the Reverend Eric Allen and it's great to have you with us uh, for this service. And today we're going to be thinking about Thomas. Today is the feast of Thomas the Apostle and so we'll be looking at that familiar story of Thomas and the doubt that beset him. But before we do that, we're going to have our introduction to worship and then we'll have our first song, Song of Love. The Lord our God, the Almighty reigns. Let us rejoice and shout for joy, giving God the glory. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. Almighty God, your Son has opened for us a new and living way into your presence. Give us new hearts and constant wills to worship you in spirit and in truth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord fills the world and knows our every word and deed. Let us then open ourselves to the Lord and confess our sins in penitence and faith. Amen. And we say together, My God, for love of you, I desire to hate and forsake all sins by which I have ever displeased you, and I resolve by the help of your grace to commit them no more, and to avoid all opportunities of sin. 
Help me to do this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord, grant us pardon and forgiveness of all our sins, time for amendment of life, and the grace and strength of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our reading is from John chapter 20, reading from verses 24 to 29. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them, and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here, and see my hands. Reach out your hand, and put it in my side. Do not doubt but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. As we think about that quote from Adrian Plass when he says, I get very impatient with church people who say there's something wrong with having doubts. Because let's be honest, there's every reason to have doubts. As we think about doubt and the part it plays in our lives and particularly in our faith, if we're completely honest, we're all beset by doubts at one time or another, aren't we? Inside of each one of us, there is a doubt in Thomas that emerges from time to time and I don't know about you but I find that unsettling particularly when it impacts on my faith. Surely as followers of Jesus, as his disciples, we should believe wholeheartedly. Jesus tells us in John 14 verse 6 that he is the way, the truth and the life. And so when it comes to our faith and we find ourselves in a place when we doubt, then it can be worrying and sometimes perplexing for us. But just what is doubt and what purpose does it serve in our lives? If you look up um, doubt and, and try to find a definition of it, you may come across something a bit like this. 
Um, doubt is a mental state in which the mind remains suspended between two or more contradictory propositions, unable to assent to any of them. Doubt on an emotional level is indecision between belief and disbelief. It may involve uncertainty, distrust or lack of conviction on certain facts, actions, motives or decisions. Doubt can result in delaying or rejecting relevant action out of concern for mistakes or missed opportunities. And then when you dig a bit deeper, you begin to see how doubt is understood through the different strands of philosophy, psychology, theology, law, science and so on. But when you think about it, doubt is not always a bad thing to have in our armoury of thinking, is it? doesn't always have to have negative connotations. You could even say that doubt is a useful weapon to have in our armoury. Doubt is very often the emotion that kicks in and protects us from making rash decisions about things. Something in our mind makes us doubt whether the actions we are about to take are a good idea or not, and whether we'll benefit or be harmed by those actions. And so if doubt prevents us from taking actions that harm us, then surely it can't be a bad thing, can it? But in our reading, we hear the story of Thomas in the days after the resurrection. In the Gospels, we read that Thomas was one of the 12 disciples that Jesus chose to be closest to him during his ministry. And so for some three years or so, Thomas has been part of this close-knit team around Jesus. He'd experienced at first hand the miracles, the healings, the teaching, right from the very beginning and all the way up until the day when they took his Lord and crucified him. Just before Jesus entered into Jerusalem and was summoned to go to Lazarus who'd fallen ill, Jesus told his disciples that Lazarus was already dead and it was Thomas who proclaimed that they should go also that they might die with him. Thomas there was showing real foresight about what was to happen in the days that lay ahead. And at the Last Supper, when Jesus was telling his disciples that he would be leaving them and going to prepare a place for them, it's Thomas who asked the question, Lord, we don't know where you are going. How can we know the way? Even though we don't learn a great deal about Thomas in the Gospels, what's clear is that he's a thinker with an inquisitive mind. And in the post-resurrection account that we're looking at, it's clear that Thomas likes to deal with cold, hard facts. Thomas is in a place of fear and anxiety. First of all, Jesus is dead, so what does the future hold for him now that Jesus is no longer around? And secondly, his life is in danger, because it's clear that the authorities succeeded in killing Jesus, and the likelihood is that they will be coming after him and the rest of the disciples too. They wanted to put this whole crazy episode to bed once and for all. That place of fear and anxiety that Thomas found himself in is not dissimilar to the place of fear and anxiety that the world finds itself in now. Having come through uh, the coronavirus pandemic, we now find ourselves facing a cost of living crisis. We see what's going on in the Ukraine with Russia. And we need to be mindful that these places of fear and anxiety can be places where doubt begins to surface more and more. The disciples had gathered in a locked room because they too were in fear of the authorities. But for whatever reason, Thomas wasn't with them. And whilst they're gathered, the risen Lord Jesus appears to them. He greets them with a message of peace and he shows them the scars of his crucifixion. The disciples' mood changes dr dramatically as they rejoice in this amazing turn of events. Jesus isn't dead as they thought. He is actually alive. The women who'd been at the tomb and discovered it empty had come back to them and told them that they'd seen Jesus alive. But that could have just been emotional hysteria, they thought. But this was different. Now they'd seen him for themselves. And the first thing they do is they go and find Thomas, try to find Thomas to tell him the amazing news. And when they do find him, 
they tell him, but Thomas doesn't believe them. He wants to see for himself. He can't bring himself to believe what they're telling him. In his mind, the doubt is telling him to weigh up what he's hearing compared to what he's witnessed. And in his mind, it's the cold hard fact that Jesus is dead that wins the day. A week later, the disciples are gathered in the same place and this time Thomas is with them. And once again, even though the doors are shut and locked, Jesus appears before them and greets them with a message of peace. Then he turns to Thomas and invites him to touch his wounds and even place his hand in his side where it had been pierced. And we see this command to Thomas delivered in just five simple words. Do not doubt, but believe. Do not doubt, but believe. And Thomas responds, my Lord and my God. Now he believes. And Jesus says, doesn't he? Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not yet seen and yet have come to believe. That's us. We've not been able in this life to stand next to Jesus and touch his wounds, but through his spirit we believe. Thomas is restored and we're told that he went on to become a great apostle and missionary, taking the gospel as far afield as India. Out of his doubt and weakness came great glory in the Lord's name. And so as we reflect on those words of Jesus spoken to Thomas, Blessed are those who have not yet seen and yet have come to believe. Let's be mindful today that Jesus is speaking of us. We haven't seen Jesus face to face, not yet anyway. And unlike Thomas, we're unable to physically see or touch Jesus. But nonetheless, through the power and work of the Holy Spirit in our lives and the work in the lives of others, we can experience the risen Lord Jesus in so many different ways, can't we? We haven't seen, but yet we believe. How wonderful is that? So as we look around us at this time of uncertainty in our world, these times of anxiety and fear, we need to trust in Jesus as the one who said he would never leave us or forsake us, to put our trust in him to protect us and to remove from us those doubts that can sometimes enter into our minds. So that like Thomas, we can move from a position of doubt to a position of faith that gives us the reassurance we need when doubt creeps upon us. Amen. A Collect for the Feast of Thomas the Apostle Almighty and eternal God, who for the firmer foundation of our faith allowed your holy apostle Thomas to doubt the resurrection of your son till word and sight convinced him, grant to us who have not seen that we also may believe and so confess Christ as our Lord and our God who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit one God, now and forever. Amen. At Christchurch and Holy Trinity, we're just beginning the process of trying to gain, gain accreditation for an Eco Church Award. Um, Eco Church is part of a, a, a project, a scheme put together by Arusha, and it's um, a, a process whereby churches can reflect on their environmental impacts and things like that. So in our worship and teaching, in, in the management of our church buildings, in, in our outreach into the community and perhaps more importantly in our own personal lives, we're going to be focusing on uh, our, our environmental impact and, and trying to gain accreditation as um, Eco Church. And um, we're going to focus on that now in, in our prayer time and to lead us in our prayer this morning we've got a video um, by the Reverend Grace Thomas who is um, one of the diocesan environment, environmental officers here in Manchester. So this today um, Reverend Grace Thomas is going to lead us in our prayers we particularly focus on our world and the environment. 
let us pray. O oh God, we are one in you, and all that we do affects the whole. Make us aware of our power to seed the world, with good or ill, in every thought, word and deed. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord, you are with us in our every journey, guiding, sustaining and protecting. May we listen to your guidance. May we learn to journey well and responsibly in the world. May we consider the paths that we take and the choices that we make along the way to try and ensure that our decisions reflect your way. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord, you are ever faithful and ever present, hearing us when we call. May we hear the call of our global siblings and respond as loving neighbours. Equip us to stand up, to speak out and to act when we know of injustice. Embolden us to call out indifference and apathy in the face of the climate emergency. And forgive us, Lord, for the ways in which we have been complicit. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Creator God, you adorn the earth with the beauty of each season. Awaken us to your loving care for all that exists as you lift up our hearts with colour and surprise. In taking flesh amongst us, you raised all creations for a new dignity. Teach us to have an ever-growing reverence for your bountiful creation and a sense of responsibility for its preservation. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Creator God and giver of life, you sustain the earth and direct the nations. In this time of climate crisis, grant us clarity to hear the groaning of creation and the cries of the poor. Challenge us to change our lifestyles. Guide our leaders to take courageous action. Enable your church to be a beacon of hope and foster within us a renewed vision of your purposes of your world. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by and for whom all things were made. Amen. As our Creator and Saviour taught us, so we pray in our many global voices. Our Father, our Father in, heaven, in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Well, thank you for sharing with us in our online worship this week. I hope you've enjoyed your time with us. And as our service draws to a close now, we're going to share in our final hymn, Blessed Assurance, and then a final prayer of blessing. Blessed Assurance Jesus is mine, oh what a foretaste of glory divine, heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Saviour. my song, praising my Saviour all the day long. Love is 
submission, perfect delight, visions of rapture now burst on my sight, angels descending bring from above, echoes of mercy, whispers of love, this is my story, this is my song, praising my sin. submission all is at rest I am my Savior I'm happy and blessed watching and waiting looking above filled with His goodness lost in His love this is my story this is my song praising my Savior This is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. The Almighty and Merciful Lord, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, bless us and keep us. Amen.